Oh man, I'm gonna start off on that camera and then I'm gonna come to you. Oh. Cool. Hello and welcome to another segment of DSU Inside Perspective. I'm Carlos Holmes and this is the show where we talk with faculty, staff, students, alumni about some of the things that are going on in the world or the great things that are going on here at Delaware State University. Today we have an alumnus of Delaware State University who's doing great things in the world of television series. We have Jamar Gardner here who stars, has a recurring role as a guard, a correctional officer, on the show Orange is the New Black. Mr. Gardner, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having and me. And thank you for coming back home. Mr. Gardner came here to share with our students here in our mass comm department and give, him, give them the benefit of his experience, uh, professional experience, and what he's doing and how that might dovetail nicely in their aspirations. Mm -hmm. But tell me, how did you land this role on this show? Uh, well, the traditional way, auditioning. Um, my manager has a great relationship with the, the casting department for mm -hmm. Orange. Um, so they were looking for a, I guess, big black guard. Um, and at the time when I auditioned, uh, the character didn't have a name. I believe it was, I, don't, I, I can't remember if it was angry black guard or just angry guard, but mm -hmm. it didn't have a name. Uh, so she sent me in for the audition. I had prepared the entire night, actually. Um, it was a long night. I had to take my daughter to school the next morning, and it was the first time I had ever watched the show. I saw it on Netflix, but I had never actually watched it. The crazy thing about that is I had to take my daughter to school at, I wake up at 6.30 a.m. Mm. I started watching, I just wanted to watch one episode because I wanted to get a base for what the character might be doing in that atmosphere and what, you know, what the show is about so I can kind of play to that. So I started watching the first episode, then I watched the second episode, watched the third. Before I knew it, it was 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> I had watched all of these episodes because the show was that good. Uh, then I started really wanting it, so I auditioned and uh, I got the role. And, uh, you know, I ended up getting the set and finding out that the character had a name. And, and then before you know it, it just kept rolling along. Now, let, let's go back a little bit. You are an alumnus of Delaware State I University. Am. You majored in? I majored in uh, mass comm, concentration in television production and print journalism. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, that television production is one thing, but now acting is another thing. Yeah, entirely. How, how did you evolve from? From that, it's it was, it was, when I look back on it, it was very beneficial to me, but while I was in it, it seemed like the longest journey ever. Mm -hmm. um, I actually knew I wanted to become an actor ever since I was a child. Mm -hmm. I remember the day, I don't remember what day of the week, but I remember it was daytime. I was watching something on TV that excited me. I ran upstairs. I said, Dad, I know what I want to do when I grow up. What do you want to do? I want to be an actor. You might want to try something else because <laughs> you might not make it at that. And I say that, and you know, when I tell my father that story, he cringes. No, I didn't tell you that. He did, but I understand where it was coming from. It's coming from a place of concern. It's coming from a place of care. He wants to make sure that I have something stable if he happens to leave this world too soon. And to them, acting doesn't seem stable. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, I, I didn't look at it at, from that perspective. Grow, you know, as I continued to age. It was just, it just seemed like, you know, that's, that's something that you don't do. So you know, It's kind of like route. wanting to become an NBA player. There's only a handful right. that become NBA, relatively speaking. Yeah. And, and there's only a handful of folks that actually join the act of, you mm -hmm. know, actors that do it for a livelihood. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. so absolutely. I, I can understand that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you're, you're a native of where? Bridgeport, Connecticut. Bridgeport, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Tell me how you ended up at Dell State, because Connecticut, <laughs> Dell State, how did you get down here? Um, well, um, there were a few things that led me here. Um, I'd like to say it was Manifest Destiny. <laughs> I think that all of it is, even this career. But um, at the time, uh, I had a, a really involved uh, counselor in school, a guidance counselor in high school. And she was getting me recruited for football at schools that, at the time, my high school football coach didn't have a connection with. So she was getting me recruited at HBCUs. So South Carolina State was looking at me, and I was like, South Carolina? 
that's a heck of a trip to be making when I want to come back. Delaware State, huh, I remember I took a tour there. Seemed pretty cool. My uncle went mm -hmm. here. It's closer. Yep, it's a little bit closer. I had a few other family members mm -hmm. that went here. And the main selling point for my father and myself a little bit was he had a friend at the time who would recruit teachers mm -hmm. out of certain schools, and Delaware State was one of the schools. So mm -hmm. major in English, become a teacher. When you get out, you'll have mm -hmm. a job, and you'll be a retire in 20 years. So that was one of the selling points for me. And also the recruitment. I had a, mm -hmm. the coach, I can't remember his name, but because it, it feels like it was centuries ago. But uh, coach would talk to me, call me up, hey, Gardner, yeah, man, come on down here, man. Yeah, we're going to get you set up real good. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll go to Dell State. Mm -hmm. Now, did you ever act in any of the productions here at Dell State? I didn't even know that there was a theater program mm -hmm. until my last year. Mm -hmm. I went and attended a play. That was the first play that I ever saw, actually. I'm lying. I saw The Wiz when I was younger. Mm -hmm. But something that to affect me in a way where it was, you know, watching it and saying, wow, you know, I want to be up there doing something like that. And but you didn't do that at Dell State. I didn't. Yeah. Wow. At all. At all. What, what can you say about your Delaware State University experience that has helped you in your current pursuits, your current professional pursuits? Okay, there was, I remember this story specifically. There were a lot of professors that I spoke with regularly. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Marcia Taylor is mm -hmm. one who I spoke with regularly uh, and just always taught me how to say, it, it sounds cliche and it, it, weren't, it wasn't used in so many words, but it was just about believing in yourself mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. being ready to take the world on. Not just taking the world, but being ready and prepared to take the world on. And one story I remember specifically from another professor who was here, Dr. Baruti Capano, I believe was his name, he said, I remember it was a, a, a paper we had to write, mm -hmm. and I went to him and I said, well, you know, I, I want to get an A. He said, you want an A? Yeah, I want an A. Mm -hmm. All right, well, you got an A. All right, just like that. And it, was, it taught me, you know, you're going to get out of any experience what you put into it. Mm -hmm. If that's what you want, then, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to work for it. Mm -hmm. so. Going back to the show, you play a correctional officer, yes. correct? What did you have to go spend some time at some correctional institutions or, or to look, learn how the demeanor of a uh, correctional officer is? I would like to say that I did because all of my favorite actors, they're method actors, which means that they get their hands inside that character. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the luxury of doing that, but what I did do was I talked to a friend of mine who works at a jail cell. Mm -hmm. He's a correction officer, but he's at a, at a uh, male prison. Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I was also a security guard, but the main thing about the show is um, a lot of your characters, or any television show, anything that has to do with, you know, they're creating that character, you're gonna find certain things within the script that you'll be able to, to get a feel for the type of person that they want portrayed as this character. Mm -hmm. So it's mostly just taken from the script and just, you know, going from there to stuff that I've learned and the classes that I've taken for acting mm -hmm. um, that I was able to bring that to life. I hope that anybody that watches it that knows anything about mm -hmm. prison life says that, oh, yeah, he's authentic. I hope that they do. You mm -hmm. know, can't please everybody. But hopefully we, we're, it seems like we're doing a pretty good job pleasing, mm -hmm. you know, a very good percentage of the, of the masses. So. Mm -hmm. Of course, you look, you look a little bit different now. You've got the beard thing yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. If you look at the picture up here on the screen here, he's clean shaven <sighs> except for the mustache. Uh, uh, but he looks the part. Oh I tell good. you what, I have so much to talk about with this alumnus of Delaware State University. We're going to split this up into two segments. So I thank you for being here. Thank this you segment, uh, hang in there because we're going to do another segment. And you'll get to see the other segment. In the meanwhile, thank you for joining us for another episode of DSU Inside Perspective. Good day now.